Be inspired with the special message from Bishop Macedo. Hello, my friends. May God bless you. Good morning. And may this week be even more blessed and prosperous in your life. After having participated in the meeting of faith yesterday with the blessed water, let us then enjoy what God has given us. Just like the blind man, right, who was healed and afterwards not knowing Jesus, Jesus then introduced himself or appeared to him or he went to Jesus because he was in the temple and Jesus then spoke to him and he recognized in Jesus that he was the Messiah, which the Jews are still waiting for. And in that opportunity, he was before the Messiah. How glorious and good and wonderful is our God, because he revealed himself to the most simple, to the poorest, the most rejected people, those who are excluded from society. So these people, Jesus would embrace, Jesus would save, Jesus would do good to them. And I believe that this remains the same today. So those who are simple, those who are needy, those who are excluded, afflicted, those who have no one for them, they have no family sometimes, no parents, no mother or father, they don't even get to know their parents, they don't even have a reference of what it means to have a family. But these are the people, exactly these ones, that He, our Lord, reveals Himself to in, in a clear way, in a way that it's visible that God loves those who are humble in spirit. Not that He rejects the rich, no. The problem is that the rich ones, they have money, so they will trust in what? Do you understand? Does it make sense? The rich has so much money that who will they trust in? They are already suspicious of those who are around them. Do you think they will trust in God if they have money? If they think they can do all things? So Jesus introduces himself to people who are humble. Those that despite... Of course, sometimes there are people who are rich, who have everything, and they are humble who know where they came from and they value the situation that they, are, they have because they know where they came from. But the fact is that to the poor, God has been giving faith. And that's what the Apostle James said, that God gave faith to the poor. Well, that's not the subject I wanted to speak about. I wanted to talk about or to continue the text from yesterday that we started with the word there in the book of Peter when he said, Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, meaning this is the worst problem of human beings, especially the religious ones, especially those who are religious. He says, as newborn babies desire, which means present the faith like the faith of a child. You know that a child accepts anything for them. They are innocent, they are pure. So many children are abused by adults, pedophiles, because poor them, they know nothing. 
They are pure, pure. They believe in Santa Claus. They believe in Santa Claus. Back then it was like this. I don't know if it's still like this today. However, he says, as newborn babies desire, like newborn babies desire the pure milk, you see, not the impure one, the pure milk of the word. And, and that's what I want to focus here with you today. What does it mean, pure milk? The pure milk cannot be the impure one that you may grow thereby, so that by this milk, this pure milk, and not the impure one, the person will grow thereby. Which means the following. It's the faith that is intelligent and rational. The faith that is based on reasoning, intelligence, because it's God who gives intelligence. Reasoning, it's given to us by God. The spirit of intelligence and wisdom is given to us by God. So, here the Apostle Peter speaks as a wise man, not because he was wise, but because the Spirit of God used him to write these words, pure milk and not the impure one. You see, back then there was already impure milk. He knew really well what was impure. Because religion, religion is an impure milk. The devil created religion. God gave the law, the commandments, which if we obey them, we are going to be blessed. If we disobey, we are going to be cursed. That's how it's been since the beginning with Adam and Eve. Pay attention, Adam. Look, you can eat from all the fruit in the garden, but that tree there, the fruit from that tree, you cannot eat. It's mine. It's mine only. God left it there. He left that tree there so that Adam could prove or would be tested in his obedience. Adam and Eve would be tested, and they tried the fruit, and consequently, humanity was generated in corruption, in deceit, in falsehood, and lies, and so on and so on. So, the devil created an institution called religion to deceive people, to blind people, to make people have emotions, religious emotions, emotions of the faith that would make them become fanatic. And that's what fanaticism is. It is faith without reasoning. Fanaticism is when a person follows a specific religion in a blind way. That's why it's called fanaticism. The person becomes fanatic. They didn't reason. They just used their emotion, the heart, the feelings. And this made them firmly embrace that satanic idea. And then we see the chaos that the world is. Inside of the churches, this exists. Unfortunately, there are many people who are more, more connected to their church or to their pastors, their respective pastors and priests and religious leaders than to God. They go to the extreme of placing God in second place. First is their religion, their church, their denomination. And there are people who are even intelligent, 
but they are so blind, but so blind that they are unable to understand that they are not being able to to see that they have no access to the light. Jesus said like this, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. I am not the truth. I am not the truth. The universal church is not the truth. The truth is Jesus. It's his word. He is the word. The word is God, which introduces itself to those who are humble in spirit. So, this pure milk, not the impure one, is a pure faith that the person focuses in the God of the Bible, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, the God who made promises and fulfilled his promises, the God who delivered his people from Egypt and brought them through the desert until the promised land, the God who fulfilled everything, everything, a hundred percent of what he promised to his people. However, unfortunately, he was also abandoned by his own people. That's the reality. Tomorrow we are going to speak about this. Because the Jews, the Jews are so, but so blind, so blind, religion makes them so blind that they come to the point of fighting and dividing their own family because of religion. And this happens as well in other religions. That's the reality, including the evangelical churches. So, the pure milk that is not impure, it's a pure faith and exclusive in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is the Lord because He was our Savior. He saved us. He is our Lord and Savior. He is the, the focus. He is the, the reason of all things. For Him, by Him, we were born of God. So, when we have a faith that is rational and not fake, then we are focused, we are balanced in our faith. We base our faith upon reasoning, upon the Word of God, which is the truth, not upon a person, not upon literature, mundane, secular literature, no, but upon the Holy Scriptures. This is so strong, so glorious, that God came to the point of saying that the word that proceeds from His mouth would not return to Him void. So, whoever embraces this word is not blind, is not fanatic, no. They are rational, they have a rational, intelligent faith that thinks, that evaluates, that analyzes, and then makes decisions. They make decisions. This is the faith that God has offered us and given us, the rational faith and not impure, not a fake one, a faith that is pure. Therefore, my friend, you can see I've seen intelligent people, very intelligent people, people who are wise, famous people that have come to us with thousands of problems. They are so intelligent. They have a diploma. They went to uni. They have two, three, four titles. And they have a degree from uni. You know, they've studied abroad and these in Harvard and other renowned universities around. But when it comes to their spiritual life, my goodness, poor them, they are absolutely blind because they embrace faith with emotion, with their heart.
And these are people who are extremely unhappy, possessed by demons, full of demons, unfortunately. And it's hard, it's very hard to lead these people to use their intellect because they say, no, I know this, I know that, I know, I know, I know. So what can we do? Only the Holy Spirit indeed to convince them concerning the truth. Therefore, my friend, evaluate your faith, analyze your faith. Please do not be connected to things such, oh, Bishop Macedo said, so that's what it is. No, I'm a man, I'm a human being full of failures and I have weaknesses. How many things we do that we shouldn't have done, or better, how many things we say that we shouldn't have said. No, my friend, please. The other day, the guy was here saying, Oh, Bishop, you are like God on earth. For God's sake, what a horrible thing to say and, and to hear. No, we are human beings, human beings. We are subject to the same situations that you are, the same situations. And God doesn't even allow, in reality, He doesn't even allow us to be absolutely perfect so that we are not going to become proud. Remember Paul, God allowed Satan to put a thorn in his flesh for him, for, for Paul not to become proud. That's what it was. Such was the greatness of the revelation he had received. So God and, and Paul prayed asked God three times, Lord, please take this thorn away from me. And God answered, my grace is sufficient. This thorn stays there for now in order for you not to fall in the trap of vanity and pride, for you not to fall into the sin of pride. That's very strong. You know that, well, this is a subject for another day. But the important thing is that you will remain in that focused faith, balanced, in order for you to enjoy the benefits of the Word of God in your life today and until your promotion, our promotion, which is when we meet up with our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? May God bless you all, and I'll see you tomorrow in the name of Jesus. Amen.